Welcome to Brazil for the first round of the Summer Racing Series at Rio. The five lights light up. And it's go, go, go. And it's a poor start from Thierry Bootson. Ivan Capelli going to get a much better getaway and take the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Nigel Mansell down inside on Bootson as well. And I think both Williams trying to make a move. There's Gerhard Berger in the Ferrari. And also the other Benetton of Alessandro Nanini. That's a mouthful. Ricardo Petrezzi also up there. There's Ivan Capelli with a brilliant start. He's all oh, gonna gonna come get everything. My Thierry Bootson, Thierry Bootson off the track, and he's almost gonna be hit by someone. I think he has been hit by someone. Thierry Bootson's round. I'm not sure if anyone else involved in that. There's looks like damage to someone. Yet yeah, there's a car with no rear wing there. It's quite a few cars with no rear wings actually. That's a shame. We'll get a replay of that to see exactly what happened. But a terrible start for the pole sitter, Thierry Boots, and he's all the way down in 19th. Who's that in front of him with no rear wing? Let's see who that is. It is... Um, the Tyrrell of Julian Palmer. So not a good start for him. Let's go on board with Palmer and they get a replay. Thierry Boots and getting on the grass and causing carnage on the opening lap here in Jack Agra. Was it a bit earlier on? Oh, there's another massive off in the further back. Didn't see this happen. So someone's gone off at the exit of turn one, have they? Oh, yeah. Oh, look how much damage there is. It's me. Oh, there's someone else off as well there, almost. It's Julian Palmer's teammate. Let's quickly pause it a sec, just so we can make sure what happened. Julian Bailey was another one who went round to go on board with him. Let's watch Julian Bailey to see what happened. He hasn't really got much of a car and just gets in the grass and spins it round and then gets hit twice. So that's a shame for him. Unfortunately, I do believe we're on the safety car, which is why we're getting quite a bit of time to watch TVP. So who was it who went off of at first? I'm not entirely sure who it was, to be honest. Looks like if I can go track side, it could possibly. It is the. I can't tell which car that is. It's a black car. I know that. Is it the Treasurus? Let's go on board. Because, of course, I didn't watch F1 in Mansion 88, so I don't have a clue who's who. But. No, it's not that. What about? Looks like it's on by Minardi. Ah, yeah. It's Louis Perez Salah who was originally spun round. Let's see what happened to him. Let's see what happened to him. There we go. So he's side by side with one of the McLarens. Not too sure. I think it's Trost. He was side by side with. Oh, Trost gets a little hit in the rear. The Perez Sala gets past him. Oh, he does the exact same as Thierry Bootson, and then he gets hit by the other McLaren and causes carnage. Such a shame that for everyone involved, of course, a long pit job for most people. Most teams as well. Let's go back to live coverage now, we're quite a bit behind. And a safety car, of course, because of that incident with all the debris needing to be cleared. Let's get back to live coverage a sec. So we're going to pause it. Wait for the timer to catch up, because we are a bit ahead of schedule at the moment. Here we go. And I'm going to go for a quick ad break while we wait for the safety car to come in. If it, or we'll see if it comes in this lap first. And if it doesn't... And then we're going to go for a quick ad break. We'll be back as soon as the safety car comes. You know the safety car will be coming in. Is it going to come in this lap? Um, no, it's not. But is Ivan Capelli coming to the pits? 
Yeah, he is. Race leader Capelli into the pits along with, I think that's Petrezzi, that's Nanini and Prost. So four front runners coming into the pits on lap two. It's actually a bit of a surprise, and there's more coming into the pits as well. I don't know if they've got damage, so I wonder why they're coming into the pits. Look at Prost almost overshot his pit box there. Yeah? Oh, there's someone, Lotus, absolutely ramming into Prost there in the pits. It's Capelli coming back out of the pits in 25th place. Not too sure why he's pitted, to be honest. But it's going to give the lead to Nigel Mansell in the Williams. With the other march of Maurizio Gormillan in his first ever race in F1. In P3. So yeah, oh, look at the debris there. I doubt the safety car will be in this lap with that much debris. So we're going to go for a quick ad break and we'll be back very shortly. Oh, peels into the pit, so do a few other cars as well, and Nigel Mansell will lead them away. If he's P2, that's probably because some people come into the pits. And they go for back to green here in Brazil. It's Nigel Mansell leads one of the Ferraris, I believe it's Gerhard Berger. And then it's um, the Argentinian Oscar guy, who I forgot his name, unfortunately. I was not around in 1988, so I'm not going to be perfect in this. I'm not as good as I'm going to be with the F2023 drivers. Let's have a look. Yeah, Gerhard Berger, it's not even Oscar, it's Maurizio Gwegleman. Um Stefan Johansson, the Ligier in fourth, Nakajima in fifth. And let's see any other battles further back. We've got Julian Palmer and Medena, is that? Having a little battle. Looks like there might have been. There's a side by side action there. It's one of the McLarens. Looks like Bootson maybe versus Prost. And Prost had a Bootson. Um, what's his name is there as well? There's a. Marlboro car, well, actually two Marlboro cars, don't think they're teammates, um, Modena's one of them, in the Euro bud, and it's not a series of boots and that, he's actually done quite well to get to 7th place. A 
them. Who's that behind them? It's a Ferrari. Is that a Ferrari? No, it's not a Ferrari. It's just a red car. Ricardo Patrese in the Williams was um, Ivan Capelli. He was leading for a bit. Less so than Nini's, yeah, but Benetton we were looking at just as he gets overtaken by Alan Prost down the inside through the penultimate corner. That's a good overtake by Prost. And I think the um, March was going to have a look, little look there as well, but couldn't quite make it. It's um, the um, uh, March of. can't even remember. Rene Arnuba says Andrea Tichesaris behind them. I can see it at the top of the screen. And here we are, the two blue cars, it's Royal versus Ligier, and it's going to be the Ligier of um, um, René Arnoux. He was a brilliant driver a few years back, unfortunately, getting a bit older. Oh, is that smoke there coming out of the, um, that car? Uh, René Arnoux is going to get past him. No, he's not. It's another 32 car. I believe it's Os that Oscar guy. I can't remember his last name, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, Ayrton Senna down in 27th place. Very disappointing from the Brazilian. Let's see where he is at the moment. Uh, he's not really near anyone. Anyway. Must have been involved in something earlier on. Here's that 31st. Yeah, Yannick Dalmas is a lap down, clearly. In the um, LaRue's. And it's the march at the moment who leaves. Maurizio Gregman. Who leaves Nigel Mansell, but Nigel Mansell down inside, that's a good move by the Brit. He hasn't won a championship yet, I'm sure he will do soon. Let's see where the um, reigning champion is, Nelson Piquet of course, in the Lotus. Of course, he has moved teams over the summer. Was at Williams last season. Now he's at um, Lotus with Nakajima, who makes his debut um, first start in F1. There's like a few other drivers here. He had Alan Prost ahead of Stefano Medena in 10th place. What a brilliant driver Alan Prost is, one of the greats he's had in F1. And of course, his son. Nicholas Prost, is he alive yet? I don't know. We'll have to work that one out. I can't actually remember when Nico Prost was born. Um, is Oscar Lowry, that's his name, in the Euro... No, not Euro... Is it Euro Bird he's in? Yeah, that is the Euro Bird. He's the white car. As, um... It's got Philip Slippy straight behind him. He's... I think got a team now, I don't think. Where's, um... What's his name? Bernd Schneider, what, how is he doing? P27 at the moment, all on his own. He's, I mean, he's got a Benetton in front of him. Is that Benetton Terry Bootsen though? Possibly could be Bootsen. No, it's not Bootsen, I think it's Nanini. And what position is Nanini in at the moment? 26, I'm guessing. Yeah, Nanini, not a brilliant race for him at the moment. But it is Terry Boots and chasing down the Lotus. I believe it's Nelson P. No, it's Satoru Nakajima, who's actually doing better than his um, world champion teammate. And there's Terry Boots, so he's going to want to make a move through the penultimate corner. No, not quite. We've got a decent run, is he? No, he's not. He's going to go into the gravel. And that's going to allow um, Stefan Johansson to make a move on him around the outside through the final corner. Is it going to work? Yes, it is. Good move from. Oh, nope. Boots and manages to keep the wheel in. And gets down inside into the pit from someone. I believe it's Perez Sala and the Minada. Yes, it is. Seven laps into this race. It's like 20 odd laps, I think. Can't actually remember. I'll have to have a look. Fortunately, memory does not serve me correctly. This is going to be a 45 minute cap race. So if this race goes longer than 45 minutes, the race will be over. Just so it doesn't go on for too long. It's only meant to be a little short summer series. Not the full distance that they did use in 1988. So, yeah, unfortunately, we can't go full distance. Yeah, nice. But I've got a pretty tight schedule I have, of course, with trying to get um, the actual F1 season sorted all out. Slovakian Grand Prix and Portuguese Grand Prix were the last two races, and I, am, I was trying to get them done at the same time as recording this race. So, yeah, but here we are now. I'm also going on holiday as well, which I have to uh, cram basically the first eight races in a week. It might even be more than eight, I don't know. But Thierry Boots, is there any other overtakes coming, going on back, further back? Or is Eddie Cheever? 
Do quite well than IndyCar, of course. Luis Perez Sara come down the pits. I think Bernd Schneider is in the pits as well. Yes, he is. Too sure why he's pissing, but probably had damage or something, I reckon. Looks like he's only been in the pits for a little while, so maybe he has got some sort of damage. Let's go on board. Just see if he has. Yeah, he has no front wing. Let's see how that happened then. Stein losing his front wing. Oh, a bit of an adventure coming to the pit lane, it looks like. Oh, off the track there. So it looks like he's already lost his front wing. Early on in the lap then, possibly. Ah, oh, it's been a collision in the final corner, it looks like. See, the bunch and I was actually running quite well, and he's rear-ended, it looks like a march. It's Ivan Capelli, who he's rear-ended. Actually quite well, okay. Ooh, the Williams there, Patrese trying to get past him. And then Patrese tries to go down the... Oh, for goodness sake, Burn. He completely rear-ended Capelli, and then he gets spun by the, um, Benetton. It's probably why the Nini's so far back, actually. Oh, he almost gets hit by McLaren as well. Don't want to be doing that. I'm guessing that's Ayrton Senna he almost gets hit by. Very dodgy stuff there by Bernd Schneider. I mean, he isn't a Zach Speed. And if you saw the pace of Zach Speed way back then, you'd know what I'm on about. They're not the best cars in the world. You've got to be honest. In about to get lapped. I need to get back to live coverage. So, let's see if we can go back. Yeah, basically live coverage now. Let's go up to see the front, it's like Julian Bailey and Pierre Martini. There's a good battle going on here, there's a Ferrari, I think both Tyrrells are involved, Bailey and Palmer. I don't know which Ferrari it is. Oh, there's a foot getting spun around there, it's the number 28 Ferrari, just behind the two Tyrrells. Is he possibly on the lead lap? Or... I don't know which Ferrari it is. But there's two Euro buds there. Could be a Ferrari is about to lap all these up. I can't see a Ferrari at the top of my screen. Is it a Ferrari who's leading the race? Um, no, it's not. So which Ferrari is it? Maybe Ferrari's a lap down. Yeah, it would be Gerhard Berger. He's a lap down. That's a shame for Gerhard. So he's actually the one in the way of all these. Such a shame. Yeah, that's what he was doing pretty promising. Oh, he's all spun round. That's one of the Euro buds. I think it's one of the Euro Buds, Euro Bruns, sorry. Yeah, it is. And it's Oscar Lowry. He gets spun round, he's lost his front wing. Such a shame for the Argentinian who makes his first start in F1. Uh, no, it's not him. He's not even in, it's got spun round. It's um his teammate, Medeno, who gets spun round, and then it's Oscar. It's able to go oh, get him in the right direction, then it's Oscar who actually gets spun round. I think it's one of the red there's a red car as well involved in that. 
Not too sure which one it was. But that's a shame for the young Argentinians r race. Which looks to be now ruined. With a new front wing being needed. And if you get another safety car. That's probably the only thing that could put his race in the right direction. Who else we've got to look at? Ooh, he is Ayrton Senna versus Derek Warwick in the arrows, and Senna up into P15 now that in his home Grand Prix. Never won at home before, as the Brazilian. And we asked him where he'd rather win, in Slagos or Rio. In Slagos was the answer, of course. Not in Slagos this year, though. We are at um, Rio. And if you're a fan with the F1 Fantasy Series, or you do want to get into it, we are going back. We are returning to this circuit for the Brazilian 2023 Brazilian Grand Prix later in the year, around November time, I think. So, yeah, make sure you're here for that. Cause that'll be a good race. If it's going to be anything like this race, you know, it will be a good one. Is that trying to go around the outside of the Benetton? Yes, it is. Down the inside on uh, Derek Quark. It's one of the Benettons. Might actually be Thierry Bootson. If it's not, it's Nanini. But I doubt Rourke will be a lap down, to be fair. Yeah, it is Nanini. And here's a good battle for the race. Bootson, Nakajima, and Mansell, and Gwigelman. Uh, Gwigelman. Gu I'm not bothering to pronounce that. Um, yeah. Is that down? That's one of the um, Nakajimas lost a few places. He's down to fourth now. And I think that's the yeah, Ligio of Stefan Johansson and Prost closing up. And so is Ricardo Petrese. Thierry Boozer and Deranged lead. No, he doesn't. Nigel Mansell round the outside through the final corner. Nakajima gets pushed into fifth place and safety cars out, I believe. Is that a yellow flag out? So yellow. Oh, there's a very slow car coming out of the pits there. Not too sure who it was. I saw a yellow flag, I'm not too sure why it was out, it was, it was almost off, is um, the Mart driver. And Mart's still getting held up, I think, ooh, Boots is almost off the track, it's not, that's not the first time he's done that. It's, one of the, it's a white car, I can't quite tell who it is, unfortunately. Probably one of the rear runners though. Boots remains to lead this race. The pole sitter, you went off at turn one, um, turn two it was, on the exit of the corner. And it wasn't actually that that caught the safety car, it was um, the Tyrrells. No, it wasn't, it was Louis Perez Sala in the um, Minardi. He was up to 24th, which isn't brilliant, but like, if you can see behind him, there's like Nelson Piquet. I think it's, I think it's Oscar Larari who's in front of these dish pack, by the way. Not really up to his standard at the moment. Anyway, let's go around the pack, see how they're all doing. 24 minutes into this race, 12 laps in, let's go through a recount of your current grid. Burnside, oh, is Burnside out of the race actually? He might be, let's see. I think Bernd Schneider might be out. Yeah, he is. So what's happened to Bernd in exact speed? Oh, he's off in the gravel there. And oh, that's a oh, big hit for Bernd Schneider. And he's still going. Well, let's go. Let's, let's watch this in real time. I think this is why he's out of the race. So, going down. Just go back a little bit. So he's going down the back straight. Of course, a lap down. He's got a Ferrari in front of him. Might be Gerhard Berko. He's, like, he's actually racing. But oh, just goes deep. I think he did like qualifying as well. Very deep from the Zach speed. The back marker team, of course. 
if this was if using proper 1988 rules, he'd have to pre-qualify to get hit by a um, Benetton. I hope that isn't Boots, and I don't think it was. We're watching him, and then there's the Ligier as well. Might be a Ligier, I'm not sure. You hit some. <coughs> and Bird Schneider is. I believe that's why he's out of the race. Just fast forward a little bit to see if anything else happens to Bernd. Oh, very wobbly. Without the front wing is the German making his first start in F1. Oh, he's off the track and into the wall. And I think that's his race over. Stuck in the wall. Yeah, that is his race over as the Benetton comes into the pits as well. With Nanini, that's his race basically done as well. Get back to live coverage. Almost there now. A couple more seconds to go. There you go. Back to live coverage now. This is Luis Perez Sala. And in front of him is a white car. I cannot tell which car it is. I did not memorise liveries from 1988. It might be. Um, oh, let's have a look. It is arrows of Eddie Cheever, and then behind them is, is that Zach Speed, or is it a bat marker? It's a yeah, it's Zach Speed. I don't know if it's a bat marker. I don't know Zach Speed got any pace. Let's have a look at the front runners now. We've got Nigel Mansell behind him. That's um Maurizio going off the track in the march. Stefan Johansson, 4th place, he wants to get his first podium in F1. Who else is back there? Down inside, it's going to go Maurizio on Thierry Butzer and Butzer and Root leading this race a lot of the time. There's one of the Williams, they have a bit of smoke, is that for Tracy? And some issues, possibly. I'm guessing it is. Unfortunately for him. And if you watch these front runners go, we're going to go to an ad break now. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see these cast battles. If you're watching on anything else, it will be um, ads, unfortunately. As into the pits comes Maurizio in the march, unfortunately. I'm guessing other people will appear soon, though. But in about a couple of minutes' time, I'll be back. So see you then. We were gone, and while we were gone, into the pits comes Mansell, and ooh, there's a... What on earth is that? Is that a McLaren? Or... I'm actually not sure who that was. But clearly damaged. 
see what happened there. I think that's one of the McLarens. The damage as he comes into the pits. Is it Senna or Frost? Um, where are the McLarens? Is Prost? Oh, it is Prost with damage. What's happened to Alan? No front wing or rear wings. He must have been involved in a pretty big shunt. Let's see what happened then. For the French world champion. Oh, it's in a big pile up there. Oh, it's Alicia. Prost in fifth. And Stefan Johansson. So actually, we probably, probably saw this if you're watching live. Oh, Johansson gets in the curb and gets hit by Prost, and then he's get hit again by someone else. By that yellow car, he's also got a bit of damage, and that's also a Ferrari of damage as well. Who is that? It's a Lotus. It's a Lotus of Nakajima. Gabriel Tarquini is also involved in that, in the Colony. And even Nelson, P no, Nelson Piquet's got away with it, actually, I think. Is that a Delara? No, that's PK. He's actually a lap down, I believe. PK a lap down? Yeah, he is. Was it when Rene Arnoux, possibly, in the other Ligier who went off? I'm not too sure. It was one of the Ligiers. And as well, the lap back markers are back here. They've been involved in a pretty big shunt. Who leads at the moment, then? Well, it's Nigel Manson before they were pitted. So let's go back to live coverage now. Behind now, there we go. Back live now for you with Ricardo Petrazzi in the um, Williams currently leads. <laughs> Doesn't really look like unless he has to still pit then he will be a strong contender to win this race but to be fair he probably didn't pick because his teammate picked the lap before and is he gonna pick yeah into the pit comes race leader ricardo petrezzi let's see who's gonna take the lead now it's gonna be ed and senna in the mclaren the home favorite he hasn't had a brilliant race so far but leads the brazilian grand prix and I hope for him, for his sake, that he can win this race. Because he has been pretty unlucky. Recently. So now Ed can send a lead, but he's being pressured by a Benetton it looks like, not too sure if Benetton it is, or if Senna has to pit or not, we've got 10 minutes left on the clock, so if this race does go to the full 45 minutes, then there will be 10 minutes left, we're on lap 18 and I only think he's got 5, minutes le um, five laps left, but to be fair, probably will go to laps I reckon, but of course there is the um, rule that um, added lap safety car laps don't count towards um actual racing laps that's just for this series not for actual f1 fantasy but for this season series only um added laps will be added to the race distance under safety car not too sure why exactly they've done it but they have so
And into the pits does come out from Senna, so the home favourite is not going to be winning this race by the looks of things. As he comes into the pits and gives the lead back to Cherry Boots and it looks like going to have the leaders from earlier battling it out. Cherry Boots are being pressured now by Gregman in the march. Nigel Mansell just a bit further back behind them. Tr gonna try and fight for it as well. Let's see who's gonna win it. And down the inside goes the march. And he takes the lead off of Terry Buttes and the pole sitter back in P2 now. And speaking of marches, where's the other march? Because he was the one that was leading at one point, not too sure where he is. But, it was the other march. So yeah, it was Ivan Capelli. The other march that I'm thinking of. Not too sure exactly where he is. I'm sure he'll turn up somewhere. But anyway, there's Thierry Boots and MP2 but getting pressured by Stefan Johansson. So will Johansson make him try and make a move for the lead? Where's Ivan Capelli? He's down in P30, so he must have had some sort of off. Unfortunately for that March driver. While his teammate leads, he's all the way down in P30. Which is not where you want to be. Especially when your teammate's all the way up there. Williams though, the only real normal front running team, which are up up the front. And there's only one Williams is actually battling for the lead. Is there a Benetton off the track? Is that Terry Boots? And yes it is. Terry Bootson goes off the track, and that's going to allow... Is that Terry Bootson? No, Mantle's in second. So, oh, no, it's not Johansson, then. It must not be Johansson. It's Rene Arnoux, I believe, in that alleged year. Or is it Johansson, actually? Is Johansson the lap down? He must have been involved in some sort of off, then. Johansson was up there, but no, Johansson's in 27th. Such a shame for the young Swede. So obviously involved in something or another, which has ended it, um, not ended his race, but put him a lap down. Because now we bounce all for the lead. Mantle gets past um, the march. Now I know I keep calling him the march. I just don't have a clue how to pronounce his name. Unfortunately, I'll have to have a look at that for the next race. But here's Nigel Mansell now in the lead of the race. Terry Boots are now there as well, and even Stefan Johansson's in front of him. So yes, he is in P3. But a lap um, behind a bat marker now as well. And is that going to be the end of um, his fight for the win? Of course, March have occasionally have their uh, um, had their highs, have their good seasons, and it looks like this is going to be another one. 1998, 1988, sorry. And I wonder which F1 season we will go to for next summer's summer racing series. I'm honestly thinking maybe 2010 or 1996. It's going to be a vote, I'm, I'm assuming. It's all Thierry Boots off a little bit there. That's going to put um, Johansson off. I'm not too sure what happened there. But Nigel Mansell isn't actually that far in front. And if he had that big of a moment, then I would expect um, him to be a bit further back. But let's see. Anyone else in any battles? Doesn't look like it. They all minded doing their own thing, to be honest. Not really any battles going down the field. So let's keep an eye on this front running battle. They're three wide, about to go through the penultimate corner. Down inside. No, it's not. It's the end of the back straight. Three wide down the back straight. Stefan Johansson, Thierry Bootson, and Maurizio Gregman. <coughs> Sorry if I keep coughing, by the way, I'm a bit of a sore throat. But it's Stefan Johansson now. He would love to be involved in this battle, but unfortunately he is a lap down. But he is able to keep going, of course. No blue flags in this era. And also, I don't think I've mentioned yet, but no pit lane speed limit, which is probably why um, Prost had his moment coming into the pit. There's a Zach Speed now in the way. It's yeah. Never, but um, Zach Speed isn't actually in the race, with Bert Schneider is currently the only DNF of this race. 
but it's Nigel Mansell who leads from Thierry Butson, not anymore Thierry Butson. Maurizio Guegleman takes P2, but not quite Thierry Butson gets in front, and he gets in front of Nigel Mansell as well. Brilliant overtake from the Belgium. The Belgian, I'm sorry. And he gets in front of Nigel Mansell, but now he's got the Zach Speed to contend with. Zach Speed's the Batmarker team, of course. They make Williams look like Red Bull to Zach Speed. It's, oh, Nigel Mansell's off the track almost. Mansell almost goes round, and that gifts the lead to Thierry Butson. As he gets past the Zach Speed. And um, Mansell's got overtaken by Gregman as well. Is it Zach Speed? I'm not sure which Zach Speed it is, unfortunately. Well, I know which Zach Speed it is. I don't know who's driving it. Like, sounds some sort of, not Chinese name, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, Mansell, though, massive mistake to possibly put off his chances of winning. But there are two bat markers, of course, in this battle with Pier Carlo Ginzani. Don't know if I've pronounced that right. I probably haven't. But now we are back to the top three, all being one, two, three. No back markers in sight, apart from behind them. It's Mansell back in front of Gregman. And now pushing Cherry Bootson to get the win is Red 5. Is he going to look round down the inside through the penultimate corner? Um, yes, he is. Mansell takes the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Great move, that, from the Brit. And now Thierry Bootson being pressured by Gregman, and he does get past. But Thierry Bootson is going to try and keep a wheel in, but he can't quite, unfortunately. And he's now down, gone from first to third in two corners. And Mansell back into lead of this race. And he thought he'd lost it when he went off this time last lap. But he's only taken him a lap, and he's straight back in the lead. And I reckon as long as Mansell can hold on for the next three minutes... Well, actually, what lap are we on? 23. How many laps of this? It's on my phone, I think, somewhere. Let's see. Well, I've got the lap count somewhere. Oh, there's Gregleman getting past Nigel Mansell. Yes, it is. But now Terry Butson. Is he going to try and make a move? I think it's about 24 laps this race. As now it's um, Bootson. No, it's not Bootson, sorry. Nigel Mansell almost off. He goes off the track there. Brilliant overtake to keep go off the track and manage to keep the car in control and take the lead of the race. Back from Gregleman in the late, um, not late in house, um, March. I saw late in house and I call it late in house. But not long left in this race at all now. We've only had one safety car, thankfully. And it was on the first lap after a Thierry Bootson spun on to turn two after a poor start from pole. But it wasn't even that, I don't think that caused the safety car. The safety car was caused by um, the Minardi of Luis um, Perez Sala. I think we just saw in the background there, going down the back straight through the um, gap in the track, the barriers. But with a minute left to go, I believe this will be the final lap of this race. So all or nothing now is all or nothing for Gregman, who goes off the track. Good save that to keep it from stop not going round. And Thierry Bootson going to try and dive down inside. Nigel Mansell leads. Bootson can't get into P2 past the march. And it's the Benetton driver who might have to settle for P2. Um, P3, sorry. It's down inside goes Gregman on Mansell, and down inside goes Bootson on Mansell. Brilliant move as they go on to the back straight now. Mansell though, as he got the slipstream, he's going to pull out to the right. He's not going to have slipstream, but as he got the pure pace, he almost got off the track. Bootson doesn't even much room on the right hand side. Gregman leads by quite a margin. Mansell goes down inside. There's only 20 seconds left. This will be the final lap of this race. Even Stephanie Johansson now past Jerry Bootson to try and unlap himself. As Johansson goes off the track, he hits Bootson. And Bootson has to stay in behind Mansell. There's only three corners to go now. Two left after this one. Is a left hander and a right hand hairpin. Mansell though, has he got he's got great speed as Nigel Mansell. Is he gonna look down inside? Not quite. He's got one more corner to go. Mansell's off the track though. Mansell almost spins it. And Bootson's gonna get past Mansell, is he? No, not quite. But it's gonna be round the final corner. And it's gonna be 
Maurizio Guagman, who wins the Brazilian Grand Prix for the race that was Mansell in second and um, Thierry Boutsen in third. Brilliant racing from all three drivers. Really entertained me. And I hope he entertained you. Is there someone going slowly there? It's a Tyrrell. It's Julian Bailey on the final lap. He's not even going to cross the finish line. It's the Minardi. So, I mean the Tyrrell, sorry. Such a shame for him. This race is now over just before the chequered flag. Where have we seen this before? We haven't. Unless you want to time travel to 2006 Hungarian Grand Prix. Uh, no, it wasn't even that one. It was a different Hungarian Grand Prix. <coughs> oh, goodness me. All that shouting has done nothing, no good to my throat. Let's see how everyone else is doing so far. No one else about, I don't think. There's only actually one retiree. Two if you count the um, Tyrrell that just pulled off at the side of the track. Not too sure what position he is now. Down at P17, he would have got a brilliant point scoring race there. If it wasn't for the fuel. Rene Arnu in 17th, Eddie Cheever in 18th, and Ray Tesra finishes in 19th. And while they cross the line, I don't actually think there'll be many more overtakes. Or who is a lap down or anything. I don't think Nakajima is a lap down. So he could be, yeah, he'll be the last person to cross the finish line. And he goes past the stricken Tyrrell of Julian Bailey. He crosses the line in P24. Let's go through your running. Bernd Schneider had a big um, couple of moments in one lap, which forced him to retire from the race. Ivan Capelli... He started from P2, had a brilliant start to get into the lead. Not entirely sure what actually happened to make him go that far down the pack. Gerhard Berger in 29th, disappointing for the Ferrari driver. Yannick Dalmas, Piercarlo Ghisani and Stefan Johansson also a lap down. Julian Bailey had to pull over on just before this finish line out of fuel. Such, oh, I don't actually know what happened to be honest. Some sort of mechanical issue, I'm guessing, to force him to retire. Satoru Nakajima, Alan Prost in the McLaren. Very disappointing race from him. Oscar Lowry in the Euro Bun. Nicola Dorini. Nelson Piquet in the Lotus. The reigning world champion at his home race. The circuit he's named after. I mean, the, the circuit who is named after him. Not a brilliant home race from the reigning world champion. Andrea De Cesaris. Eddie Cheever. Rennie Arnoux. Luis Perez Sala. Alex Caffey. Derek Borek. Alessandro Nanini. Felipe Aliot. Michele Alboreto. And your top ten. Stefano Medena, Pialini Martini, Gabriel Tarquini, Julian Palmer, and your point scorers, Ayrton Senna, Felipe Streif, the Williams of Ricardo Petrezzi, Thierry Boutsen, Nigel Mansell, and your race winner in the March, Maurizio Gregman, or Gargelman, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm not going to attempt it anymore. But thank you for being here for the inaugural summer series, summer racing series at Jag Pagua. We'll be back tomorrow at Imola for the San Marino Grand Prix. I hope you'll join us then. Goodbye.